Welcome to today's video. My name is Madelon Vos and this is Madelon Talks. Today we'll discuss the most important macroeconomic and Bitcoin related news of the week. And in this week's video, we're going to take a look at the next steps of the Federal Reserve. As you might know, inflation is here to stay and the Central Bank doesn't yet really know. But we're going to take a look at the next steps. We always have to be upfront from what is coming. So we're going to take a look at what might be coming next. We're also going to take a look at the fact that the Federal Reserve, the IMF and the SEC both together around the same um, days are telling us that they don't want to ban cryptocurrencies. And after they told us this, the market went upward. We saw the price of Bitcoin rising really fast. So what does this mean for crypto? And does this mean that we're not going to see a crypto ban. And what does the, is the government going to do? The United States going to do? So we have a couple of question marks still. So we're going to take a look at that as well. And we also are going to take a look at the fact that the price of Bitcoin was rising quite fast. We've discussed this last week that we expected the price of Bitcoin to rise. And now we might see a retrace, a setback to... Um, just have a little moment to breath again and then we might see another rise. But we're going to take a look at that in the end of this video when we're going to do the technical analysis. We're also going to take a look at the stock to flow model of plan B who hit, by the way, 1 million followers, which is insane. Okay, I'm going to put myself in the right corner of this video. And if you aren't subscribed to the channel yet, make sure to do so. And you can do that by pressing down below on the subscribe button and also make sure to press the bell so you will get notified when there's a new video online it's completely free so make sure to do so and we're going to start this video with this article from the wall street journal talking about inflation and the fact that inflation might be here to stay we already know that inflation is here to stay and that it's not transitory but central bankers a lot of central bankers do not know yet, or at least they act like they don't know. Um, I want to scroll down and want to show you the end of this article. We've talked about the fact that Costco and FedEx have rising prices and um, that people have to pay more for their goods and services and that the margin for the companies is decreasing quite fast. But the Wall Street Journal wrote this. You don't need a doctorate in economics to understand that when rising demands meet too little supply, the result is inflation. If structural changes turn out to be the main cause, Americans should not expect the consequences higher prices at the store to be transitory. So what they're actually saying is that you don't need a doctorate to see that these prices these price increases at the store are might not be transitory. And this only happens when the main cause so is a structural change. And we are seeing these structural changes. We talked about this so much. We are so often we are seeing the fact that we have the wage push inflation incoming, that people are demanding for a higher uh, salary because they can't pay their rent. Um, and that's why you get when you get rising prices, because there is more demand. There is a lot of money available. So there's more demand. And this is where it becomes quite interesting, but also quite scary at the same time. And a couple of days later, the Wall Street Journal wrote another article about the fact that they are asking themselves if the Fed has the will to fight inflation. And this is where it becomes quite interesting because they, in the first article, said that they don't need a doctorate, we don't need a doctorate, you don't need a doctorate in economics to understand what's going on and that inflation might not be transitory. So now the big question is, how will they fight inflation or even will they fight inflation? Are they going to fight this? And this is where it becomes super interesting because we know that they don't really have the handles to fight inflation anymore. We've discussed this so much. They can't hire interest rates because then the debt is so, is so huge. The pile of debt is so huge that 
uh, governments, but also citizens, but also companies will default on their debt if the, um, uh, the interest is going to be raised. So that's not a thing that they will do. Uh, on the other hand, we have seen that they are willing to taper a bit. And tapering means that they are not purchasing um, printing money. It's, it's as simple as printing money. So they are not going to print money anymore. But we also know that the bubbles that, cause, that are caused by printing money might collapse if they start tapering. So they are going to start tapering. This is going to be their fir the fourth, fourth attempt that they are starting. And when you see that the stock market is going to collapse or might collapse, they're going to step in and going to purchase more assets and going to uh, increase their balance sheet and blah, 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 blah. So they're probably not going to do anything because this is more a political standpoint, a political point of view. So in the end, this means that inflation will rise higher and higher and higher and higher. And we know that inflation right now is 5% official figure. It's probably way more, it's maybe even 10% or maybe even higher. But 5% inflation a year means that in 10 years, your purchasing power will be 50% less. It will be 50% less. And then we have a lot of other structural changes because the, the first article spoke about the fact that their um, structural changes turn out to be the main cause that in decades prices at the store will be higher and um, not be transitory anymore. And we are seeing that there are more structural changes, not only the wage push inflation in which you have more money available because people want higher wage. No, we have um, shortage on the other hand. So right now the Texas company offers truckers 14 K a week. And they admit that there is a historic driver shortage. So there's a shortage on the other hand as well. So we now have shortage and a higher demand at the same time. And this is where it becomes quite interesting because people are seeing what's going on right now. And Take a look at this tweet from Holger. Holger is our German friend and he spoke about the fact that last month there were more than 4,000 stories on Bloomberg Terminal mentioned the word stagflation. That's more than twice as many as in August, which itself was a record high going back to 2012. And as you see on this um, chart, 4 thousand articles that mentioned the word inflation. We all know where this is going through. So stagflation is a period in which we see that there is a lot of inflation and at the same time the economic growth rate is slowing down and we have quite high unemployment figures. So this means that for the government, for the central bank, it's really hard to do something about this. And um, they're quite stuck. And this is what we're actually seeing right now, or what I think that we are seeing right now. And a lot of people are seeing this with me because they wrote about this so often last month. So now we have to ask ourselves if this is something that might be temporary because we have to take a look at all the facts. We have to get all the facts together. And we've heard about the fact that these truck drivers get paid more but at the same time we're also seeing that the shipping costs which we spoke about last week are decreasing a bit again and then you can ask yourself why is the cost of shipping between china and the us plunging why because we saw that um the shipping cost from uh china to la were like I think it was 3k or so and it went to 14k uh, per container and that was quite heavy but now we see that the rates are going down a bit and then you're going to ask yourself what's going on then why are the um uh, why are the prices decreasing again does this mean that it is temporary that inflation is temporary no it does not mean that inflation is temporary it has the worst what they're saying on um, 
Zero Hedge, it has the worst possible reason. And the possible reason is this, but only because the power cuts being seen in China have led to a shortage of goods. Such as such, Western importers pay less for shipping. So this means that there is a shortage of goods in China. That's why importers pay less, but only because the imports are not available at any price. So there is not enough to import. That's the real deal. And this means that there is a shortage, not only a shortage in staff, not only a storage a shortage in um, the, the products, the producer, producer products, but there's now also a shortage in real goods, customer goods that need to be imported. And that's not happening right now. So this is why container rates have peaked and are decreasing again. But there is a perfect storm going on. And we've discussed this last week as well. The perfect storm was first about China having a crisis and it was about the energy crisis. And now this energy crisis is moving to Brazil and to India as well. And we might see this in America and in Europe as well. So this is something we need to look at. We're going to take a look at this next week again and see what has happened. So this is a something that will, will be discussed for the next couple of months or so. And with all of this happening at the same time, a shortage in staff, in employees, a shortage in producer products and a shortage in goods, the final product. And on the other hand, we have a rising demand, which causes inflation and we have these lack of all these um, goods that causes are causing more inflation, then we need to have someone that steps in and says, we're going to do it completely different. But right now the Federal Reserve isn't stepping in. They are taking a look at the possibilities of a central bank digital currencies. And the Fed prepares to launch a review. And officials will release this paper, but are unlikely to decide soon on government-backed cryptocurrencies. And this is quite heavy. Um, I've been into this business since 2008, 2013. And um, in 2013, Bitcoin was still a nice coin. Um, which was used on the internet and was quite weird. But right now, governments are thinking about their own cryptocurrency, about programmable money. And that's where it becomes quite scary as well, because they can program everything when it comes to the central bank digital currency and they can inflate your money <laughs> until 0 0.0000 if they want to. They can tax everything if they want to. So... For central bankers, this is so interesting, but this has nothing to do, and this is what you should understand, this has nothing to do with cryptocurrencies, with Bitcoin, with decentralization, um, with a open, an open ledger. This has nothing to do with a real cryptocurrency. This is just a digital form of money, which can be controlled by the government. Um, but we are going to take a look at the papers when they will be released but for now the federal reserve chairman jerome powell said that they have no plans to ban bitcoin and cryptocurrency and after that the price of bitcoin went upward the price of a lot of cryptocurrencies went upward not all but a lot um the chairman said that they had no intention to ban or limit the use of cryptocurrencies like we are seeing in china um, and he said that he had misspoken last time at the last meeting. Then the interviewer asked his question again, but you had no intention to ban them. You have no intention to ban them. No, no intention to ban them Respond uh, is what Powell responded. He went on to explain that stable coins um, need to have a regulatory framework and I can imagine because stable coins are front running um, a central bank digital currency. And a lot of my friends are using stable coins in order to get transactions uh, all across the world. And in order to um, make sure that they don't have the risk of 
a commercial bank anymore. So stable coins are super interesting when it comes to uh, using a digital form of money if you want to. Then we have the IMF calling for implementing global standards for crypto assets. So the IMF is mentioning the crypto ecosystem and market developers. First, it was all about blockchain. Remember in 2017, it was all about blockchain. Now it's all about crypto and payments again. So they are seeing Bitcoin cryptocurrencies as a payment system, as a payment mechanism, not as a store of wealth at this time. And um, they have shared a document, the crypto ecosystem and financial stability changes. And um, they're talking about a lot of different uh, a lot of different things, for example, stable coins, but also about smart contracts, about the whole cryptocurrencies as an asset, uh, about DeFi as well. And uh, the IMF said the following, policymakers should implement global standards for crypto assets and enhance their ability to monitor the crypto ecosystem by addressing data chaps. Emerging markets faced with cryptonization risks should strengthen microeconomic policies and consider the benefits of issuing central bank digital currencies. So they are moving to central bank digital currencies as well, but they need, they're as well saying that crypto assets need to have global standard. They need to have a regulatory framework. That's what they actually said. But they also said at the same time that they don't want to have cryptocurrencies to be banned. And that's quite interesting. Then we had the SEC saying that they will not ban crypto. That will be up to Congress, is what Gary Gansler said. So they as well. So we now have the Federal Reserve, the IMF and the SEC together saying that they're not going to ban cryptocurrencies. Um, they are saying that they need to have a regulatory framework, but they are not going to ban it. And afterwards, afterwards we saw the price of Bitcoin rising so fast. And um, this is where it becomes quite interesting. Bank of America says that Bitcoin is too important. The crypto industry is too large to ignore. So we have the IMF, the Federal Reserve and the SEC at the same time telling that cryptocurrencies should be regulated and uh, not be banned. Also, the Bank of America said this um, and they're seeing a bright future, I think, for cryptocurrencies. And this might help people towards a central bank digital currency as well. But right now, Brazil is doing something different. They are seeking to make Bitcoin a legal payment currency. Not really a legal tender, but a, re uh, a regulated uh, currency. So Brazil's legislators are expected to discuss in the next few days a bill that seeks to establish a regulatory framework for cryptocurrencies, which may be a major step toward making Bitcoin a legal payment currency if the country uh, approved this and Congress should do this. So here we have the facts about what's going on right now. And we just have to wait a couple of more days to see if Bitcoin will become a payment method, a regulated but payment method in Brazil as well. That will be cool. I think we will go to Brazil then. Um, we also have the visualizing rise of the cryptocurrency transactions. And this is where it becomes quite interesting because as you can see, 2020 has a peak when it comes to um, daily transactions. And this is about Bitcoin, but also about ETH and Litecoin. And especially ETH is growing quite heavily when it comes to transactions. And we have, of course, the DeFi space, which is super interesting right now. There's so much going on in the DeFi space, but it's also quite hypish. You know what I mean? And you might remember that Facebook had some off time last week. You probably remember because WhatsApp didn't work, Instagram didn't work and Facebook didn't work at the same time. But you can also rank all of the biggest public companies, the biggest precious metals, cryptocurrencies and ETF in one row when looking at market cap. And as you can see, Bitcoin is now standing at the eighth position. But last week... Bitcoin was still ninth and Facebook was eighth. So there has been a flipping between Bitcoin and Facebook after 
Facebook at some downtime. So Bitcoin is now bigger than Facebook and almost as big as silver. We have to grow a little bit before we are going to uh, be higher than uh, silver. And uh, I wanted to show you this tweet of Plan B. And this is an interesting one. Plan B reached, by the way, one million followers. He's really a crypto legend right now. Bitcoin legend, is he? And um, he spoke about the fact that cell walls are pure scare tactics to scare you out of buying. When I'm trading, I usually look at sell walls or buy walls. You can take a look at this depth chart. And Plan B is actually describing what he sees on this depth chart. And as you can see, um, he wrote a little story, but, but I will explain it really easily. As you can see, um, he's actually saying that if they really wanted to sell large amounts, they would do it stealth mode, not signaling their position. And he is actually quite right. But in this depth chart, you can usually see when a lot of people are willing to sell. So take a look at this. This is a high sell wall. At this point, there will be more sellers than buyers. There won't be that much buyers at that time. So a lot of people are willing to sell at 250K. That's quite interesting, right? But Plan B is saying, if you are a good trader, um, for example, if you are going to poker, you will never show your cards. And this is actually what's happening when looking at depth charts. So a lot of people are saying that they're going to sell at 250K. So that will be a big resistance when it comes to technical analysis. But actually he is saying that people won't do this because orders will um, execute driving the price down. The wall also keeps price down by discouraging people to buy. So this is actually a big resistance line. Um, this may be done because the investor wants to keep the price low long enough to buy his preferred price or some other reason. So he doesn't really know why people are putting their orders in because the price will not reach that level quite easily. But this is interesting. I like the way he looks at uh, these kinds of trading mechanisms. Um, the depth chart is really hard to trade on, but you can use it as an extra when you are using uh, technical analysis or on-chain analysis. He's looking at on-chain analysis quite often. Uh, I tweeted about the fact that Plan B had 1 million followers and I don't know what he has right now. It's probably still 1 million. I don't know. Yeah, it's still 1 million, but it's it's a lot. It's really a lot. Um, we have the stock to flow model. We need to take a look at the stock to flow model right now. As you can see, this movement looks quite the same as this movement. And this is where it becomes super interesting. We're now going into this position. So at the end of the October, we might see some decrease in price again. We might see some decrease. Keep that in mind. But at the end of October, maybe even November, we will see the price of Bitcoin going upward again. Um, and this is where it becomes, this is where the model will fail or the model will still work, keep on working. Um, I want to show you this one. Bitcoin is at 50K right now and we are at 52, I think right now, but he tweeted this yesterday or this morning, I don't know. And he said that we only need 26% to reach the 63K and 63K will be the closing price of the stock to flow model. He has uh, thrown this, this is the picture he made. And he also spoke about October, November and December as well. So this is December in which the price will reach, or at least when it comes to plan B's analysis, 135. I'm super enthusiastic about this. We will see what will happen and if he his model will still be valid. Um, but if we take a look at the technical analysis right now, then, oh, this is interesting. 
there's something really big going on. Okay, so we will take a look at the chart of Bitcoin right now. Um, as you can see, I've discussed this in my Dutch video as well. As you can see, here we have this falling wedge. We've had this falling wedge over here as well. And ooh, look at this. Oh man, I love technical analysis. Okay, um, take a look at this falling wedge. This falling wedge. Usually when the bottoms on the chart are going down and the tops are going down as well. This is actually not what it should look like. This is what it should look like. But usually when this happens, um, the price of Bitcoin or the, the price doesn't matter what type of asset it is, the price will increase and you can calculate where the price will go. So the price will go to this area. And then we had this um, head and shoulders pattern and we could calculate another target point. And right now we have this falling wedge again with lower bottoms, lower tops, and the price could increase as much as 13.6% um, and 19.37%. Right now we're actually sitting, uh, I think around 19 or 18.8% or so. And we did hit a double top over here. We're now struggling around this area, which I already drew, I think it was last week or so. So this is super interesting to see. Actually, this is the most important um, resistance we have right now. Take a look at this. We have this cup and handle pattern. If we break out upwards today or tomorrow and the bottom will close right above 50, let's say 52. Then we have a breakout and this breakout might bring us to as much as 70k or so. I will take a look. Let's say it's going to be this breakout point. I uh, don't even want to see it. Oh, it's going to get way higher. Yeah, then we have an increase of uh, almost 40% and that will be uh, 73 or so, 73. So that will be right in the middle of November. Yeah, it was November, I think. The end of October, beginning of November. No, it will be the beginning of November. And this only happens when the price of Bitcoin moves below this point. But this line is a quite heavy resistance line. So we have to keep in mind what's going on over here and see if we're really going to break out. So usually when this happens and the price will go, maybe it will go upward until this and then we'll go downward and test this neckline again. So there will always be a buying opportunity again. But um, I didn't expect this to happen. I did expect the price to move around this area. Um, but if we break out upwards, tomorrow then we will see way higher prices than we have expected for now uh the only thing that you need to keep in mind is that we might see some bearish divergence we're not seeing it right now by the way but this could happen we're also going to take a look at the daily not not super high on our side by the way we've had some bearish divergence as you can see over here and then the price went down again we've had some bearish divergence over here and then the price went down a bit uh, so keep the bearish divergence in mind. But for now, this looks quite good. Oh my God. Uh, I love technical analysis. Um, so I didn't expect this to happen uh, this fast. We keep in mind that we want to have on the 8th, on the 7th of October, we want to have the body of this uh, chart closing around this area at 50, 52k or so. If that happens... We might see an upward movement and a downward test again towards 50 again. But we need to have this alt resistance line as a new support line. And we have a couple of more days, maybe even a couple of weeks to see if this is going to happen. Um, on the four, four hour, we still have some resistance, but let's see what the next couple of hours will bring us and um, see where this one closes and see where we are going to... Um, move 
So for now, I would like to thank you for watching. Also, don't forget to take a look at my support links page, which you will find special deals from our partners, having a uh, transaction fee free um, uh, trading tool or whatever, um, discount on trading view. We have a lot of uh, discount types, especially for the people who are watching this channel. And don't forget to follow me on Instagram. I'm currently in Portugal right now. Uh, met my friend Didi again, and we are moving across Europe. We're not sure where we're ending up uh, this month or later next month. Um, but make sure to follow me and my um, traveling stuff. And also make sure to follow me on Twitter. Oh, by the way, if you follow me, then you will have uh, a lot of stories available as well on a daily basis with the latest news about crypto. You can also follow me on Twitter, um, on which I will tweet regularly, like regu regularly, regularly uh, about the latest news when it comes to crypto or Bitcoin or whatever. So for now, I would really like to thank you for watching this video and I hope to see you soon next week. Please don't forget to press the thumbs up if you like this video and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. I will see you next week and have a great week. Bye.